Hey, it's Joe Solari, and welcome to the business of writing. Today, it's just going to be us, no special guests, just us talking about what happens in publishing when AI becomes ubiquitous. It's going to happen when it happens, how it happens isn't as important as how you think about you structuring your business for those days. Now, the big thing we see right now, is what always happens with new technology is it's general fear. But the reality is resisting this becomes kind of weird. Like, I know there's some folks out there that still write their first manuscript with pencil and paper, or they're used to writing on an old Remington typewriter or what they learned when they were in the newsroom back in the 80s, however it was that they may find it comfortable to make that first manuscript. But the reality is to that work becomes digital. Whether it's them or somebody else is going to take that work and make it digital. And anything that's going to be digital is going to have AI associated with it in the future. Even if you choose to not want to use these things, you're going to be using them because they're going to be added in all the tools that we use. We already see that to some extent in the fact that we have things like uh, grammar checks and things that are related to helping us be more productive. But I've already noticed in the tools that I use, such as Notion and ClickUp, they are embedding AI right into the program to help you be more productive. That's where things get real interesting for me is because there's so much focus on those that are going to be the the trash posters, right? The, the market is going to get slammed with all these AI books and there's going to just be an onslaught of content. Those people will come and those people will go because the market already is really efficient at sorting out books that people don't want to read. If you're not familiar with this concept, you probably haven't read my book, Advantage, because I talk all about how a winner-take-all market works and how cumulative advantage is the G to getting your company aligned with that force. Because in today's world, the popularity market focuses most of the attention and profits on a very small portion of the marketplace. And in publishing right now, when we look at the numbers, less than 1% of the people make 90% of the money. And that's obvious when you look at how rankings work on Amazon and the tens of millions of titles that are below a 100,000 rank, which means that they're not even selling a book a day. So we know books that are ranking 100,000 above are the ones that are making all that money. And many of those titles are by the same authors. They produce small work. So again, it's concentrated across a smaller amount of titles and then even smaller amount of authors. That's what I think that people have to be concerned about is the authors that adopt these tools and use them to be more efficient and more productive. Maybe they only get an extra book or two out, but that's going to give them one or two more launches to run. And in my view, that becomes rounds of play to build more cumulative advantage. So their system will be slightly more efficient. What about the ones that are going to be using AI to help manage their audience and build better off reach? They're going to scale up their off reach faster. And the problem that we're going to suffer from is that we're going to see a higher and higher concentration of success in a smaller amount of people because of how these tools work, right? How they're using them themselves to be more productive and more efficient and doing more to hold a bigger audience. But then there is the next piece, which is the idea about how AI is going to work and help other people. Search fund is going to fundamentally shift. Right? There could be a day where AI, you just say to AI, hey, I want a movie written with these actors and these, this type of script and this type of adventure, right? And it would go out and make it. Maybe that'll happen. But for most people, how this is going to progress is it's going to be around the idea of AI is going to be out there looking and sorting and figuring out the optimal answer for any question. It works in a set of in answer sets. Beyond thinking about just how AI is going to be used as a tool inside the industry is how is it going to support you finding new readers? Specifically, how are you working to get AI to make you the answer of choice? So when it says, I want a new science fiction book, that's space opera that, that you're going to be coming up in those results. How are you thinking about how you design your form and content and the messaging so that AI goes out and learns that you're the obvious choice. It's going to fundamentally change how people market. And that's where I think we get lost in the weeds. We're more worried about 
these guys that, yes, in the next 90 days may produce a million more titles of crappy books that nobody, instead of taking the time to say, that's going to play out how it's going to play out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to learn these tools so that I can figure out how I'm going to use them as my kind of assistant to be the most productive producer of content and the best manager of an audience that can possibly be. I'll give you an example. Theoretically, all of the future hip hop hits are already made. The tracks and the hooks are all sitting on vinyl in crates or even now in digital, been moved to digital recordings. It takes a human being to come in there and go find the right hook and put it with something else and get the timing right and put it together into a beat that then somebody could go put lyrics against, whether it's an AI written lyric or a human written lyric. But it's that human curation, that piece that comes and figures out that next thing, the thing that's timely for the market now that a machine can never do. Because right now and for the foreseeable future, if you went on to chat GPT and said, should I use for my drum loop on my hit hip hop record that I want to write? It's going to say, use funky drummer from James Brown. And it's going to give you some timestamps because that's been the most used drum beat in hip hop history. And it'll just concentrate on the results that have been successful so far. That's why the machine can't win the game, but the machine can help you win the game. When you start to think about how can I get it to see that I am the obvious choice and then concentrate on those results so that pounds into the marketplace and shows it to more people. Now, how we actually do that, that's stuff I'm working on right now that I'm trying to figure out and understand how it is that you're going to be figuring out the ways it's easy for humans on one hand and machines to figure out what you offer and why you're the best at offering it. And I think that's the philosophy you really need to be focused on, that positive attitude of how I now have this abundance of tools that I can use to be more productive than an author could ever be in their life and to have ease to lean on tools to help me where I may be weak. Do you have problems with certain types of things? You're going to be able to use AI to prop you up and to strengthen you rather than worrying about that you're going to be disadvantaged by how people game the system with it or do things in an improper way. Because the reality is that we're selling to human beings. Machines don't buy, human beings die. And in the end, what I've latched on to is the idea, if I can get somebody to attach their identity to my brand and to see their success is tied to the success of my brand, they have a willingness to make sure that it's successful because it makes them successful, it makes them feel good. And then they, if they get true joy out of what we're doing, when they interact with the brand, then they want to get other people involved in the brand because they want the best for their friends and family. So they say, hey, you should be doing this stuff. My brand, for example, is helping authors. People come to me because they want the success they've seen in other authors. And when you are able to deliver on that, then that becomes one of these feedback loops that keeps building and building. And when you step back and say, can I use AI to do more loops, more of these feedback loops or intensify them, then I'm using AI the right way. So shorter episode today, but I just wanted to get these ideas out to help folks understand these different concepts I have around, don't worry about the trash producers, don't fear the tools, adopt the tools, understand how human curation and how these tools can be used to help you augment your capacities, and then focus in on what really matters. And that's del delighting a reader with a story experience, right? In the end, the machine can't make that story unfold inside their mind's eye. Like you can, your ability to improve production, your improved ability to improve quality, that can be supplemented with AI, but it'll never take out that human curation piece. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe and we'll see you on the next episode.